everybody. I hope that you are doing well this week. We finally have some warm weather today. Um, today we will be talking about the colors of the rainbow. And the reason we are talking about the colors of the rainbow is because something special happened this week. It's a holiday that we celebrate every April. Any guesses? If you guessed Earth Day, you are correct. On Wednesday, April 22nd, we celebrated Earth Day. Now, I hope that some of you got to go out. I know it was kind of cold that day. Um, and if you didn't, hopefully you can get out this weekend because it looks like it's going to be beautiful. All right, so if you are a smarty pants, you probably already know the colors of the rainbow, which I bet many of you do, but it's very crucial that we know the colors in their order because it pertains not only to the rainbow, but it also pertains to how we learn about color and art. So today we will be making a rainbow. Um, after this video or before this video, I'm going to attach a link in the description of another video that I found and there's a story called Rainbows and Windows by an uh, author named, let's see, an author named Ariana and I don't know how to say her last name, it's very unique. Um, and it's just a beautiful story about how rainbows can bring hope to others, especially when we're feeling down and um, we need just a little pick-me-up. And during times like this with the virus going around, this is a big time to share a little bit of that love and share a little bit of that hope. All right, let's get going to rainbows. Okay, so I've created several rainbows this week. I made this one out of clay. You can make one out of salt dough if you followed along with the salt dough lesson. And I just put little bands of clay together to make three layers and then I painted them in the colors. The, paint, the colors in the rainbow start with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Now you might be looking at me like, Miss Culp, I know that pink is in my rainbow or Miss Culp, I am so smart and I know indigo is in the rainbow. Yes, you can add those colors into the rainbow. I would say that these six colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, are probably the most important colors that we will learn about in art. But there are some colors like indigo that's a color between blue and purple. It's kind of like a blue-purple mix. And then of course after purple comes pink. And we'll talk about that when we're creating our own. Okay, so what you're going to need today is just a blank sheet of paper. Um, you can grab a pencil. And if you have any type of coloring supplies, we're gonna need all the colors of the rainbow. If you don't, I have another method that we will talk about near the end of this. So grab a red utensil, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And again, if you wanna throw in the pink or the indigo, you can go ahead. So the first step is you're gonna to wanna to draw your rainbow. And I already pre-drew mine, but I'm gonna just trace over it so you can see better with my black Sharpie. And the reason I'm gonna use Sharpie is because Sharpies are permanent. If you do want to use a permanent marker, make sure to ask um, one of your parents or an adult at home to help you with it just because Sharpies can be, while well, they're permanent and they can be a little toxic. So definitely going to help from an adult. I'm going to trace over my lines because I want them to be permanent because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of art magic. Now, if you are in first grade, you would have already done something like this with me before. We are going to use our art magic and we are going to turn our marker into paint. So if you want to do that, follow along with me to the end and we will turn it in to paint. Of course, you don't have to go ahead and turn it into paint if you want to dry material like crayons or colored pencils or just leave it as dry marker. You're welcome to. But for me, I want to try doing some paint. Okay, so right now this is what my rainbow looks like. You can see I drew some other lines. I'm going to leave those blank because I don't want the black line to take away from the rainbow when they're blending colors. And we'll talk about that more as I start to blend and see how that can change. Um, but it's up to you. If you want to go in and trace each line too, you're welcome to. Or if you don't want to trace it all, I'm just doing this to help it stand out. Okay, so the first step is I'm going to take my red. Now I'm not going to color all the way in. I'm going to outline the edge of the red and I want to make sure and leave enough room 
for all six or seven colors in my rainbow. I'm going to do two lines of red. And I kind of want to make the lines that I'm doing with the red thick. Again, I'm not coloring in because I'm going to make this turn into paint. But I am going to make thick lines because the thicker the lines you do with markers, the more paint it will create. So here's an up close view of that leaving white in the middle. The next step is going to be orange and then all the way down to purple. So hold on tight as I do that. All right, so here is my rainbow so far. If you want to just leave it at this, you can stop the video now and move on to that story I talked about at the beginning. Or if you didn't have a chance to use, if you don't have markers or crayons or colored pencils and you want another method and, and a way to make a rainbow, um, stay, continue watching the video and I will show you that method. Or if you would like to see what this looks like painted by adding water to it, stay tuned. All right, so before I move on and do the painting for this, I wanted to give out another example for those of you that want to um, do something different. So you could have done a rainbow just by drawing it and with only a pencil. And maybe this time you could have chosen, if you don't have colors at home, what you can do is pick a shape for each color. So my red, I don't have a red at home, but what I could do is I could make like, a pattern or use shapes to create those colors and I can color those in later once I do get crayons. So I'm going to make a key. I'm going to say triangles equal red, maybe circles equal orange, square can equal yellow, let's do hearts can equal green, um, Maybe a cloud shape can equal blue, and a diamond can equal purple. So let me hold that up for you. So you don't have to use the shapes that I chose, but if you want to make a rainbow using shapes versus colors instead, um, it'd be helpful if you put a key so I know that you understand the order of the rainbow. Um, but for each layer, you would just do a row of those and I'll show um, a finished picture of this at the end of the video. Okay, so if you don't want to do it that way because there's no color, there's another way you can do it with color. And what I did was I took, I went into my closet and I found a bunch of things for each color of the rainbow and I created a rainbow out of my clothes. So I have red t-shirt. I didn't have anything orange in my closet, so the only thing I found could be something with orange writing. So orange, and then a yellow, and then this is a really dark green, one of my Lorraine t-shirts for blue, and then I found a scarf for purple. And I just took big hair scrunchies and put it in the middle to create the arc, and then one on the end and one on the end. Um, I'll share a video or a picture at the end as well of this like this, as well as one just with the colors all stretched out. So that's another way, if you don't have art materials at home, I understand you can use clothes or other found items. I was even thinking you could use blue plastic bags from Walmart. Um, anything you can find around the house, as long as you get permission, align them into a pattern, the rainbow color pattern, and that'll be good. Um, all right, so thanks for staying tuned for that. The final step I would like to show you is doing a little bit of that art magic that we talked about in turning our marker in to paint. So let's go ahead. One thing I'm going to do first is before I go ahead to paint is I have these really fun highlighters. Um, they're really light colored. I didn't want to use a bright vibrant color like the rest of my rainbow. I wanted to try something more uh, light or it has a pastel look to it. And I'm going to use these three highlighters. I'm going to add a little bit of color to my clouds. You can leave your clouds blank or you can go in like me and just add a little bit of color. Now I've never attempted turning highlighters into paint, so we'll see if the water can turn these into paint too. All 
almost makes it look like cotton candy clouds because they're so bright and highlighter like. Alrighty, so there is my clouds. Um, now it's time for the magic. So what you're going to need is I, just a little container of water. You don't need a lot of water, just a little bit. You're also going to need some form of either old rag that nobody's using, or if you want to use a paper towel, I use a rag because I can reuse this and reuse this and I'm not wasting. Um, and then finally, you're going to need a paintbrush, which I have my monster's mouth full of them. So if you don't have a paintbrush at home, you can always use something found, um, like an old toothbrush. Make sure you sanitize it first, of course. Uh, you can use a cotton ball. You can use a Q-tip. Any of those types of things, if it's soft, it will spread your paint like you want. So I'm going to grab about a medium-sized brush, and it has a nice point at the end. Um, if you don't have... A medium sized brush and all you have is a large brush maybe choose something like a q-tip that's a little smaller unless you made a huge rainbow and you have room to move so we what we need to do to make this magic is we need to wake up the paint the paint is really dry right now because it's a marker so we're gonna say a few magic words we've done this in class so if you remember please go along okay this is a repeat after me this is also a do as I do. Abracadabra. Kalamazoo. Turn our rainbows into something new. All right, if you said it with me, uh, we have said the magic words and now our markers will turn into paint. So the first step is you're gonna take your brush. We're going to dance in the water. Now, just like we did in class when we were painting, we are gonna paint on our papers. And whenever we paint on our papers, it is very important to treat your paintbrush like it is a beautiful ballerina and she is dancing on the tippy toes of her brush. Because if we scoot the brush like this, that doesn't look too good. That gives our, our hairbrush a really bad hair day. And what it's going to do is it's gonna break our brush. And especially if you push down on your paper with a q-tip or something else that's not as sturdy it's just going to fall apart and you're going to be wasting it so dance on the toes of the paintbrush to make sure you have a nice neat painting as well as you keep your paintbrush safe so again you dance in the water you're always dancing on your toes the next step is you're going to start at your red it's important that you start at your red because the colors are going to start blending together and if i would start right in the middle of my paper in green and then I want to go back to red, we're going to find out that red and green like to make the color brown, which you might not want in your rainbow. I've never seen a brown rainbow. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to go right to my red. I'm going to add a little bit of water. And hopefully you guys can see it where my camera is sitting. Um, I'll hold it up in a moment. Add a little bit of water and try to spread it around throughout the whole red. I was I used I created two lines for each color so that where the red is, where the marker is, it's gonna be the darkest. And then when I move it between the two lines, it'll be a little lighter. And it'll create a really beautiful effect. Okay. Every time I'm between colors, I wanna swish my brush in the water, dance in our toes, and then we don't have a sponge here unless you have your sponge. But again you're just gonna dab it on that towel and it's nice and clean. So let's take a close look of my rainbow. So, the sun is really bothering me. Okay, so if you can see where the lines were once were, they're still there, but they're a little bit more um, blended. And where the white part was, is become like a lighter red. So that's what's gonna happen throughout the whole rainbow. And as you move forward, if your colors mix a little bit like red and orange mix, that's okay because colors in the rainbow are actually blending all together through it. We just don't want to mix like red and green from different ends of the rainbow because it'll make weird colors. All right. I've 
left the clouds, I want to kind of do that together and see what happens. Um, and if you were painting along with me, you might be noticing that the paint does something funny when you use markers. Like I said, um, the water wakes up the paint because the markers were dry. And it's turning those markers now into a fluid paint. But as you let your paper sit, I've noticed on mine, some of the water from the one color likes to sneak up and go to the other colors. It kind of expands and gets brighter as time goes on. So if you don't feel like your markers look very vibrant, um, wait a little bit and it'll actually start transforming into a more vibrant crease. Okay, now let's see what happens when we add water to our highlighted um, clouds, or in my highlighted clouds at least. Again, I've never practiced or tried water on highlighter and I don't know if it's water soluble. All right, so I don't think they're water soluble, but you know what? It's all about learning, it's all about the experience. Um, and even teachers need to learn something new every day. All right, so once your rainbow's all done, let this dry if you chose to paint with it. Um, and then and when you're all done, you can decide if you wanna create a background on it. Now, in the story that we talked about, rainbows in the windows, the cool thing to do is to put your rainbow in the window once it's dry, facing maybe um, one of your neighbors. And the whole point of that is to let them know that like, we're all in this together and we're all here to make each other feel better. Um, I created a rainbow yesterday in my window already, um, but I'm planning on hanging this one too, maybe in a different part of my house so other people can see it. And you can be part of this movement sharing with people around you that you can't come in contact anymore that we're all in this together all right well i'm excited to see how you make your rainbow and what you do for that um please share with me in our portfolio section it will be under the assignment rainbow in our windows um yeah i'm very excited to see all this thank you for creating with me today and i hope you have a wonderful weekend